On the eastern edges of Las Cruces on Dripping Springs Road is the Farm and Ranch Heritage Museum. The 47 acres comprising this museum, the interactive exhibits throughout the property, and all of the animals living here, sheep, goats, cattle, and more, make this a must while you are here in town. Beyond livestock, their outdoor exhibit also features a vast collection of antique farm equipment spanning the different eras of agriculture. But once you make your way inside, the exhibits reach further back into our farming history, 4,000 years. With ample supply of salvage materials and artifacts, this museum has created a vibrant and tangible chronology for its visitors. Vignettes staged throughout the space allow you to imagine what life was like for earlier generations of New Mexicans, who toiled and struggled to make a life for themselves here. Beyond the images and biographies displayed on the walls, the museum's curator, Tony, History offers me more Mexico. insight. So I'm wondering what the historical significance is of having a museum like this in Las Cruces. One of the unique aspects about New Mexico's agricultural history is that it does go back by 4,000 years, but the Las Cruces area was one of the first areas to experience the wondrous thing that must have been corn and, and, and its cultivation. And the valley really, really uh, came into its own in terms of agricultural production uh, with the building of Elephant Butte Dam. And so Elephant Butte probably is what made agriculture really possible in southern New Mexico. So speaking of that, in this museum, does it tell a story of the different exhibits? Uh, when we entered this room, we walked by a uh, reconstructed uh, pit house. People often interpret that pit house as uh, New Mexico's first farmhouse. Mm -hmm. And in many respects, it actually was. Right. The town center that we have over in this portion of the gallery, that relates to the time of around statehood. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a... Uh, general mercantile and what a mercantile would have been like in a rural area where uh, agricultural people would have come in to purchase things that maybe they didn't have or make or grow on right. the farm or the ranch. But the mercantile is a real different immersion experience for people because it really shows them how far we've come. The mercantile is very, very different from the big box stores that right. you and I shop at today. And what I find really, really neat is when I encounter visitors that come in and they can relate to what they're seeing right, there. Yeah, yeah. And so for that reason alone, it's important. It's important that uh, our children, our, our citizens understand and know where their food comes from and the history behind that. It took 150 generations from that 4,000 year old mm -hmm. agriculture that I spoke of earlier to get us to where we are. And so those stories are important for us to understand where we've been uh, helps us to make better sense of why we are where we are and will hopefully help us plan for the future and make it a better future for all of us. Tony sure knows how to put things in a greater context and the museum aids in this effort. With live demonstrations and even some hands-on instruction, you can make a greater connection to skills and crafts that have passed down generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just take two or three like this across manually, stop, turn, hold this. There we go. So you'll have the feel. There we go. You got it. You got the rhythm. Traditional techniques of iron and steel smithing, as seen in the blacksmith shop, have also been taught in workshops and classes offered by the museum. But perhaps one of the most exceptional things I had the opportunity to partake in while I was here was the annual blessing of the fields. This rich tradition has been played out for more than 17 years at the museum. Honoring the story of San Isidro, the patron saint of farmers, a local priest or bishop leads a procession around the grounds, blessing the animals, plants, and acequia of the museum. For people who grew up in the Mesilla Valley, this age-old custom is a part of life, and harkens back to workers in San Miguel who would make a pilgrimage each spring, stopping in villages along the valley, concluding with a fiesta. Our dependence on the land and its resources, especially our water, resonates. And it makes me grateful traditions like this have held steadfast in this community, honoring the land, the life it gives. Another way to appreciate this region's agricultural bounty is to visit the weekly farmers and crafts market downtown. With more than 300 vendors, there's an abundance of fresh produce, preserves, plants, and artisan products for sale. So much, you may not know where to begin. First stop, I recommend grabbing some breakfast at one of the food trucks to help fuel you as you wander. And remember to bring your own tote bag so you can really load up. 